Hey y'all, Otaku here. Halloween events are a pretty prominent tradition for Roblox, and while the ones many remember are usually fantastical in their nature, none aren't majorly that creepy. That's, of course, if you're only looking at the most recent ones that happened during the years of 2013 to 2018. Ones based around carnivals, trick-or-treating, or even going through an amusement park. If, instead, we were to take a look at the Halloween events that occurred before these new ones, there's a lot more of a heavy emphasis on discovery, venturing through spooky uncharted lands, and covering mysteries to find treasures kept away through riddles and puzzles. Or they hold some sort of paintball event. Either way, these older Halloween events felt pretty unique and far apart from the newer events. A clear example of this comes with the first ever true installment of a Halloween event on Roblox, Halloween Treasure Hunt 2007. There's so much allure to this event. Like, how compared to its future successors Halloween 2008 and 2009, there's way less information and talk regarding it publicly floating around. You'd see way more results of actual documents and gameplay following these two events, but when compared to 2007, there's pretty much nothing. So why don't we take a look at it? Today, I'll be returning back to Haunted Hill, uncovering all the secrets of this event and leaving no stone unturned. So let's get on with it, eh? On October 30th, 2007, Roblox released a hat onto the catalog that was priced at 15 Robux, the Halloween Lore Book 1. This dark colored book, completed with a picture of a ghoulish jack o' lantern on the cover and labeled accordingly with a 1, just seemed like an item Roblox released to celebrate the season of Halloween at first. I mean, it dropped a day before Halloween, and it didn't look too far apart from the other books Roblox released previously, which were all regular accessories, so surely there's nothing this book could possibly be hiding, right? However, it was clear that there was more to this item than what first meets the eye. The description of the book on the catalog page reads the following. Legend tells of 13 Halloween lore books, which together reveal the location of the Crimson Cat Eye, an artifact of great power long for to be lost forever. Additionally, behind the book read, Return to Haunted Hill. What could this mean? Quickly, players found an account called Haunted Hill. Nothing seemed apparently strange so far about this account, just a basic avatar using an entirely different book from the one that seemingly referenced this account, but the status of the account stated something interesting. This level, Haunted Hill, is a thank you to all those who were supporting Roblox. Roblox loves you. This was in relation to a game listed on the account's profile, Haunted Hill. The original Haunted Hill or Haunted Mansion was created a year ago in 2006 by Shiletsky to celebrate Halloween, and it's now pretty much known as the iconic retro Roblox Halloween stage. It's pretty strange seeing as this old level was attached to an account directly named after it, so players head into the game on the basis of it being attached to this newly added item. This is where the experience of the game splits in half, with the unknowing players being separated from the investigative players. Those who aren't wearing the book seemingly join into an empty green base plate up on top of a large black box. Nothing seemed apparently different from the norm, this just kind of looks like an empty game. But to those who did bring the lore book with them into the game, they had, let's just say, a largely different experience. These players spawned outside of Haunted Hill, the classic 2006 level with a mysterious task before them. Before heading into the gameplay itself, I just want to say the premise of this event is amazing. Stumbling upon clues left by a seemingly normal hat, which then leads to a pretty strange account, speaks exactly like some kind of ARG. And the leading to how players who don't own the book essentially being kicked out of participating makes it feel exclusive. However, not to praise all of the event, this exclusivity of making people essentially buy a 15 Robux book that, mind you, was also marked as Builders Club exclusive, does end up buying the events back as this pretty much paywall tactic makes it so the amount of players who could experience and additionally document this event be cut down by a ton than it would have if the event was free to play. This Builders Club paywalling is a big running theme with old Roblox. You could see it in gift explosions, egg drops, and even in this event, which is probably one of the earliest examples. However, I can't really see still complain about the lack of documentation, like this is 2007 after all. The user amount remained at a steady 6 digits, way less than the billions we have today.
Once joining into the event with the book equipped, you are met with the iconic haunted mansion in front of you, and without any real exposition to what you're tasked to do, you're just kind of free to run around. In your inventory, you're also given 5 Halloween themed tools. The Ghost Walk, a utility based hopper bin that allows you to float whilst turning you slightly transparent, like the jet boots. The Pumpkin Bomb, a Halloween themed version of the Time Bomb tool that instead of dropping a bomb, drops a big old explosive pumpkin. The Rocket Launcher, just kind of the same thing as a normal rocket launcher, but you know, its icon is a little bit more in orange now. The Skull Shot, a slingshot reskin where instead of slinging small red projectiles, you instead sling larger white skulls. And then finally, the Soul Asylum, a tool that teleports you above a hole in the map, placing you in prison. Maybe not the most useful gear, we'll say. All these tools were part of the original Haunted Mansion level, and now with all of them being here, the expectation is that you use these to defend yourself from other players, or to get around the map better. The map itself contains the exact same locales you expect to see from the original game. The green swamp, the pumpkin patch, the red room, the eerie attic, the underground cave, this weird area that contains tanks, and the witch room. While the whole game seemingly looks just about the same as the original 2006 game, those who were keen would spot books lit around the map which, when being collected, would notify the player of the book number they just found, and would add one point to a leaderboard stat aptly named Books. Players were tasked with finding 12 books in order to decrypt a secret message. These books weren't masterfully hidden for say, but they provided a challenge enough to those who were unfamiliar with the map's layout, creating a sense of discovery when players visit somewhere that they would normally never visit in a normal brick battle scenario. Books start from 2 all the way to 13. The reason you don't need to collect book 1 is because the Halloween lore book had itself is marked as the first book, meaning, well, you've already found it. Book 2 is located near the outer edge of the map near Spawn, under a tree conspicuously hiding in a small forested area. Book 3 is located in the green swamp, spawning in the air before plummeting into the green swamp water. Book 4 is located underneath the slide near the playground area just outside the left side of the mansion. Book 5 is located just outside the pit where the player falls through when using the Soul Asylum. Book 6 is located on the roof of the mansion in the small crevice. Book 7 is located in the attic under this hard to reach gap, whilst Book 8 is located in the fridge of the kitchen in the mansion. I recommend causing some small property damage to get in. Book 9 is located behind the lower stairs of this weird tank area. Again, some property damage should suffice if you can reach it. Book 10 is located on a shelf in this green room on the right side of the entrance to the mansion. I like to think that the full process behind this one is that Roblox scenes are just too short to reach the uppermost shelving. Book 11 is located on the ceiling of the red room, obviously the most horrific room in the whole mansion. Book 12 is located in the corner of the lower cave beneath the mansion. And finally, Book 13 is located on the desk in the secret witch's brew room that's hidden behind a non-collidable wall. Going forth to collect all 12 books, which can be collected in any order, will reward you with the secret following message. Great! You found all the books! To collect your prize, message Haunted Hill with the code CADI, followed by a randomly generated free digit code that was given uniquely to players. I'll talk about this code again in a bit, but I want to talk about the books again. Books, when collected, are deleted, and then they regenerate after a period of time on a set timer, announcing globally when they do. Trying to collect a book that you already own just returns with a message stating that you already own the book and the book not being deleted. This system, whilst ultimately basic due to the time error not really having amazing local client side scripting, is handled very well. It gives the opportunity for all players to collect every book whilst also giving the opportunity for more daring players to quickly rush and kill players to quickly collect the books first. On a side note, in a blog post Strzelecki wrote to retrospect about his development of this event, the average time people took to find the books was around 30 to 45 minutes, which is rather crazy to think about, but then again, it was a lot of players' first time exploring this map. I think the gameplay is ultimately fine for the first real scavenger hunt Roblox held, and the way they went about avoiding prizes felt very personal, giving out a special code that only the single player can get. The reason why these codes had a random number attached was to avoid players sharing the same code to get the prizes. Shletsky could easily identify when a player has a shared code when two different players message the exact same cat eye code, since, you know, the probability of players getting the exact same 3 digit number was about 1 in 1000, which, looking at how many players actually got to compete in this event, felt like a realistic number to cut off.
Successfully messaging Haunted Hill with your legitimate code like the message told you to will initially not give you anything. That's to be expected since a lot of players at the same time were also messaging their codes in. Approximately 151 people were identified to win this highly anticipated prize. What was it? Well, the Crimson Cat Eye, the thing that the book referenced in its description. The description of the Cat Eye reads, The Crimson Cat Eye was once the talisman of a powerful sorcerer who lived alone in a dark, creepy mansion known to the locals as Haunted Hill. One day, the sorcerer just disappeared, but legend says that he left his eye behind and is still there somewhere in a haunted hill, waiting. The cat eye was additionally put on sale after it was awarded for, ahem, a, a generous and a very realistic amount of 50,000 tickets. Let's see, that's about 5,000 consecutive days of logging into Roblox or 50,000 visits, so, uh, rather, rather unrealistic, I'm afraid. At least the lore book got put back on sale to those who, uh, don't own it after the event ended. Going back to the cat's eye, it's now a limited item, and a rather rare one at that, regularly maintaining a value of 100k Robux or more. Makes sense, as only a few copies of this hat even exist, and overall it just looks very nice. And hey, even the lore book went limited, mind you, for like, a fraction of the price, but, you know, it, it's still worth quite a bit of money. Anywho, the cat's eye might even have a hand in inspiring some future eyeball hats, such as even the ever so iconic Overseer Eye. Though, the actual first eyeball hat, the Emerald Eye, did beat its release by a couple of days, so it, th that, that's pretty up in the air. Overall, the two hats, the cat eye and the lore book, are thematically very fitting with their creepy and kind of spooky style that only old Roblox could really replicate. Thematically, this event pretty much encapsulates that old Roblox Halloween feel that every Halloween event past the first initial few doesn't really have. It's got that unique one-of-a-kind ARG feel and this charm that really reflects how events were at the time, small little one-offs that the community and the developers can enjoy alike. The only real fault I could see of this event is how it's practically paywalled, artificially making something more exclusive by locking the enjoyable experience behind a price of 15 Robux in Builders Club, something not a lot of players inherently had at the time. But hey, you can at least chalk that up to Robux wanting to make this feel a lot more exclusive to the few keen individuals. So with this list of pros and cons out of the way, I'd personally like to give this event a 7 out of 10. Before this video ends, I'd like to share this amazing recreation my friend Plethora made of the event, pretty much having everything as it were during the event back then. This was mainly because Shalesky additionally made this copy of Haunted Hill on copy locked, and we managed to find an archive to use which he promptly fixed up all the weapons and all the wonky parts of the game to make it playable again. If you'd like to check out this event, I'll be linking the recreation in the comments and description of this video. So, did you guys agree with my take, or am I being too generous? Let me know in the comments, and I'll see you next time when... I, I I get out of this place. Ugh. I love spooky things. I love spooky skeletons. I love this thing. I love the the re real real. I gotta make this under 30 seconds. Ah.